Christ is risen. In this paper, I assert that authentic human relationships are based upon an embodied presence, one with the other. Relationships formed through online media, even if not fraudulent, still lack the full measure of criteria needed for authentic human community. Online encounters introduce and coordinate, but cannot replace an embodied encounter. This paper explores the orthodox Christian ethic of human relationships on the basis of the doctrine of St. Maximus the Confessor regarding logi of creatures and personhood. St. Maximus the Confessor teaches us, man is now engrossed in the principles of technical skills on account of circumstances or to meet his needs. Technological innovations are as old as mankind itself. Our conference is dealing only with the very latest of advances in human technique. 2,000 years ago, the Roman road system, then later the European medieval banking and monetary system, then the mechanical clock in the 12th century, and after that the printing press in the 15th, and only a little more than a century ago, radio and international or internal combustion engine, all these rank high among technological developments. Internet communication technology provides the newest arena for the church. Consider, for example, the many chant offerings on YouTube, orthodox websites of every kind, including patriarchates, archdioceses, and dioceses, and monasteries, and parishes. It seems like the Holy Mountain is right next to us sometimes. Informative blog sites, orthodox news sites, and even digitalized theological libraries, for which I am very grateful. However, the extent of technology is limited to this world's circumstances and needs, as St. Maximus stated. He cites St. Gregory the theologian, that's who he's interpreting in his ambigua. Adam was naked in his simplicity and in a life devoid of artifice. Atechno is what uh, he says, this beautiful word. Without any technique, without technology, and without any kind of covering or barrier, for such was fitting for primal man. And then St. Maximus interprets Gregory, the illumined receive in all things the ray of true knowledge, and in the light of its simple unitary principle, they withdrew their intellect from multiplicity as much as possible, and through simplicity of mind receive the whole scientific knowledge of things. This is the spiritual way, which of course endures. We agree that all technologies are developed with potential for great good. However, they can also be a means of harm. The same ancient Roman roads which gave St. Paul access to many places also offered a rapid movement of warlike peoples. In modern times, the automobile, although it provides freedom of movement, it also encourages rootlessness and alienation from the land and the soil. The internet offers rapid transfer of very specialized and personal information and communication over very great distances, thus rendering our planet with the feel of a village. But this immediacy for good also provides an immediacy for evil as well. Online pornography, gaming, violent uh, gambling, violent gaming, and other internet distractions abound. Many more addictive, distracting, compelling, and thus obsessive time-wasting forays through the internet can leave users physically exhausted, mentally worn out, and emotionally despondent. This is a proven fact. One form of internet communication, the social media, Facebook, Twitter, etc., provides a special case which shows the potential good and the harm of the new technology. Social websites provide a convenient way to stay up to date and current with so many people in one's life. Photos, personal life currents, happenings to be announced to one and all. However, one may post pictures and information to the viewing public which is not required to be factually true. So this new technology, like no other before it, allows 
and unfortunately even invites persons to create their own persona. I use that word in its Latin absolute meaning, persona as a mask, in whatever manner they like. But this opens the way to fraudulent relationships. At what point does the persona come clean? Furthermore, social media undermines the, so the orthodox, tends to undermine the orthodox virtue of reticence and silence. Instant familiarity is always superficial and shallow. Agios Dorotheos of Gaza, Saint Dorotheos of Gaza, warns us about the uh, spiritual dangers of being too much out there with others. Public display, in Greek, parisia, this is the phrasing I'd like to suggest for this awesome word. In its negative aspect, parisia is the worst of all, it is complete ruin, says uh, Abba Dorotheos. And again, further in his fourth teaching on the fear of God, peritu fovu tu theu, he reports Aga, uh, Abba Agathon's reply to this question, is uh, parisia, is uh, public to stay really that troublesome? And Abba said, there is no passion more fraught with difficulty than public display. It is the mother of all the passions. This is a very big uh, thing to be concerned about. Now, the claim to virtual reality in internet relations cannot stand up. I don't like the term virtual reality. It's neither virtual nor real. The simple reason for this lies in the fact that human relationships must be physically and bodily real, real, material. That is, material and concrete with the participation of the whole person. The profound theological insights of St. Maximus, the confessor, illumine this point. What is a truly authentic personal encounter? What is the state of persons dwelling in that encounter or human community? Can there be truly an online virtual community? Can relationships formed through internet-based introductions be authentic human relationships? I assert that any encounter fostered through technological means, old or new, can at best only be introductory or provisional. Recently, I held a Skype session with a beloved family member who is thousands of miles away on business over a long time. In the Skype session, we see each other, we hear each other's voice, we see the surroundings in each room. Yet even so, one of us said, I miss you. Not I missed you, but I miss you, present tense. And the other said the same thing. Now, when we're physically present to each other, we do not say, I miss you. We human beings are embodied and we cannot abide a strictly phantom means of relating to each other. We want to be physically in each other's presence. St. Maximus teaches us that man is a kind of second cosmos, a great creature in small, another angel, a blended worshiper. I love that word, mikto proskinitis, beautiful expression. But that man, in St. Gregory the theologian's words, flowed down from above, that is, he abandoned his primal dignity. This flowing down is a movement toward non-being, prostumion. And man entered a condition of unstable deviation, a statu perifora, and fearful disorder of soul and body, ataxia vini psychistike somatos. Man freely chose to exchange what is better and existent, ondos, for what is inferior and non-existent, mi on. A sedition between existence and non-existence. Now, God the Word did not simply project to our mind's eye a phantom appearance of himself in the form of flesh. That is, in the prophets, God the Logos used distance learning to prepare us for the real thing. As God, he was the motivating principle of his own humanity, and as man, he was the revelatory principle of his own divinity. He experienced suffering in a divine way since it was voluntary and he was not mere man. And that he worked miracles in a human way since they were accomplished through the flesh, for he was not naked God. 
The concreteness of human creatures is innate. That is part of us as substance, as usia, our essence, to our logos of existence as such. St. Gregory the theologian said simply, o logos paginete, the logos becomes thick. St. Maximus offers three options for understanding the saying of the theologian and teacher. One, the carnation itself, the bodiless took on a body. Two, the logos ineffably conceals himself in the logia of beings. And three, for the sake of our thick minds, that's a great expression in English, by the way, he consented to be both embodied and expressed through letters, symbols, and sounds so that from all these he might gradually gather those who follow him to himself. Note that the logos is not the letters, the syllables, and the sounds, but rather that these elements lead men to himself. St. Maximus exposes his doctrine of theosis as something which follows from the logos of human creatures realizing itself in participation with the logos himself. Participation, metohi. This is precisely why the bodily presence of the faithful in the church nave for the Eucharistic synaxis is so important. It is the key of real participation of human beings which grounds our ethic of all relationships. Any relationship which lacks the concreteness of embodied human mutuality and a sharing of love is a phantom relationship, something docetic and superficial. Now, superficiality does not have to be bad. It's just that. It's a limited thing as far as one can go using media for personal means. So then what can I say in conclusion about internet media as an orthodox priest and a working pastor? The internet can serve as a porch, like a stoa, you know, like an open area to meet, where exchanges can take place. However, participation is necessary for the depth relationship to occur in which the realization or the thickening, the pachysis, I'm guessing on the Greek word, you know, the, the thickness of the logos can develop. One can learn about the church, but one must experience her life in order for the grace to really work. Any relationship based on internet communications, but lacking the concreteness of embodied and fully present human interrelationship, it invites a kind of fraud, even if unintended. An avatar of a person is not the real thing. Any schism between the person, the, uh, the prosopon, and the persona, the mask, creates illusion, disappointment, and grief, leapy. The body is not insignificant. The confessor writes, like the soul, the body possesses the form of the whole human being predicated of it by virtue of its relationship as a part to the whole. And again, the parts, soul, and body can only be separated in thought. It is not possible to find the soul and the body except in relationship to each other. St. Maximus teaches that God became man, not superficially, but essentially. God the Word and the man in a theandric union, quote, in a manner beyond us, the Logos, beyond being, truly assumed our being and joined together the transcendent negation with the affirmation of our nature and its natural properties, and so became man, end quote. He made his way through possible element of our nature, authoritatively showing that what in his own will is moved naturally by his power is in our case that which moves our will. To conclude, our ethic is based purely on theology. This ethic calls for pastoral care of souls, for spiritual therapy to be administered concretely in a real, material, personal encounter where there is experienced shared eye contact, mixed breaths, the minute reading of facial expressions, did you know that there are literally thousands of possible configurations of the facial muscles, often a very fleeting and mo momentary action units as the people who have studied this name them, all telling the truth about what is transpiring in the soul? If you read a face, you see everything. 
This depth of encounter is impossible even under the most exacting technical standards without a direct spatial encounter. Finally, the contact of touch by the priest's hand, the epitrahelion and confession, the daubing of holy unction, not to mention the actual reception of the holy gifts themselves. Taagia, Dora, Tis, Tu Somatos, Ke Ematos, Tu Christu. All this constitutes the fullness of participation in the Logos, our Lord, God, and Savior, Jesus Christ. I use text, email, Skype, website, and the rest to organize, to invite, to prompt, to coordinate, and to instruct in big gestures. However, I reserve all therapeutic and pastoral communication for direct personal contact. In closing, I only wish to add the fact that I have been learning how best to use and when not to use this new te technology for all the various purposes I have in mind. But I think that the Lord will grant discretion to us pastors as he, we wend our way along these new paths. Vox to Theo, hyper